Hi guys, welcome to the third part of the Animal Crossing character tutorial series. In this, I'll be texturing the character that I modeled in the previous tutorial. In order to texture an object, you need to unwrap it. There's a few tips and guidelines that will make unwrapping easier. First thing is the UV grid. It's a checkered image with little plus signs on it. And you can save this in the textures folder. Then switch to material preview mode so you can see the textures you apply. It's important to have your materials named right. And then to the body material, I set the UV grid as the texture. And as you can see it in the viewport, the texture is distorted. That is because the model is currently not unwrapped. So let's start unwrapping. So I mark the first seam around from the sides. And since the mirror modifier is enabled, I only have to do one side. So now when I hit unwrap, the texture changes. It has better squares now. But the nose still has some distortions. So I have to mark another seam. Sometimes if the existing edges aren't good enough to mark a seam, it's okay to add an edge loop as long as it doesn't change the overall mesh. So I inserted a new edge loop and marked it as a seam. That gives a better result. And for the body, in any biped character, there's a few constant seams to mark. The ring around the arm and a split for that cylinder. Another ring around the hip where the leg is shown. A split for that cylinder and the bottom of the foot. And for the torso, an edge to separate the front and the back. For the tail, a seam to split the cylinder and a seam to open the end cap. After unwrapping, check for any distortions left. And since the tail is symmetrical, I deleted one side and mirrored it. Join all the body parts into one mesh with Ctrl J and unwrap again. And now it's time to pack the UV islands to get the maximum texture space. You can do this in the UV editor and to see things better, I removed the UV grid. The goal here is to arrange the UV islands without overlapping each other, but using most of the space. You can do this by scaling up and down and moving or rotating the islands as necessary. If the squares on the model appear undistorted and somewhat same size, then the unwrap is done. And then it's time to texture paint. First you need an image to paint the texture on. So for that, I load up my concept reference with the color palette and pick the base color for the skin. Then on a new image editor window, I create an image with enough resolution and give it the base color that I picked before. You can use hex codes for accuracy. Name the file accordingly and save it in the textures folder. And now in the materials tab, replace the UV grid texture with the one that you just created. So the first coat of paint is already done. Before you start painting, it will make your life so much easier to make a color palette in Blender using the reference. It shouldn't take much time anyway, unless you have OCD. Brush size can be controlled in the right side panel or by pressing F on the keyboard. Strength can be adjusted with Shift F. Now you can just start painting as you like. But I prefer to stick to the concept art as much as I can. So I turned visibility on the image planes that I used when I was modeling. 
and with alpha on, I set it to appear in front of the mesh. Wrong plane. There you go. Do the same with both planes. Set the opacity to a level so you can see the mesh. And start painting. I started with one side so I can go on front wave and adjust accordingly. Your concept art may not always match both sides, so for this part you'll have to improvise. For the nose, I painted a smudge on the tip so I can see which island it is on on the texture map. So I can go into paint mode in image editor and paint the island there itself. Preventing the hassle of accidentally painting on the wrong place on the face. Same process with the snout. And for the ears, I use both windows for the ease of paint smearing seamlessly. Always use concept art for accuracy and likeness. same for the limbs and belly. The tail however may require a little extra attention on the rings. You can either use lines of the UV map and spend time painting straight lines like I first tried here. Or mark the rough intervals for the rings, save the image and export the UV layout. Import both of them to any vector drawing software, I'm using Inkscape. Place them on top of each other using Snap and draw on the rings. You can do the same with Photoshop. Re-export and reload the image in Blender. Animal Crossing characters have eyes that are drawn onto the texture. So for us to have eyes that animate, we need two texture files. So in the texture folder, make two copies of the image file, name one for the eyes open and another for eyes closed. Back on the materials, load the one with the eyes open. Make sure you do the same on image editor. and then draw the eyes to match the concept art. Use both windows to get the sharpness and accuracy with ease. Once you're done with that, load up the eyes closed and do the same.
and now it's time to paint the shirt. Same process, unwrap the shirt, marking seams similar to the body. Then apply a pattern texture of your choice in the material. And since shirts generally do not have a seam in the middle of the back, apply mirror modifier and hit unwrap again. You can arrange the islands to fit the map. And since it's a repetitive pattern cloth, overlapping will not cause a problem. So that's it for this tutorial guys. In the next part we'll rig him so he can move around doing little cute things. Thanks for watching.